The more you associate happiness with curiosity, the happier you'll be when your curiosity is satisfied. Welcome to the happy channel. It's the other skills. Let's actually go into the story of Zoroastrianism. Where exactly did it originate and from what did it originate? Because before a religion begins, there has to be some source. So is that a source of beliefs, etc, etc. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but the one thing I've understood about Zoroastrianism from all my Parsi friends, honestly, is that it is in many, 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 many ways like a sister religion to Hinduism also. Like they're both sister religions, very similar, especially when you took a look at the old uh, Vedic uh, beliefs. There was too many parallels. My reading here is because it's sort of geographically similar locations. It's this whole subcontinent and Central Asia stretch. Uh, do you have anything to say about that? Yes, a lot. Uh, I would say that uh, even before the word religion may have come about, in the Hori past, we are talking of Indo-Aryans. Uh, uh, we all studied, I remember I studied it in the, my fifth standard, that there was a group of people called the Aryans much before any religion came about. And according to our religious tradition, it says that they were staying very much in the north, almost near to the North Pole. And this group of people whom uh, we call Aryans in the Avasta language, it is called Ayriana. Ayriana literally means belonging to a noble race. So this group had three types of people, geographically, three types of people, the Europeans, the Indians, and the Iranians. And they were all living together peacefully, uh, even perhaps before the Great Deluge came along. The Great Deluge? Yeah, which happened 12,000 years ago. Oh, okay, okay. I've got to, I'm stopping you in two places here, okay? The first place is this whole Aryan invasion theory. It's... Uh, Greeted with a lot of anger online nowadays. Like a lot of Indians get very offended with like the Aryan invasion theory. So we've had archaeologists on the show where I've asked uh, them about the Aryan invasion theory. And uh, Disha Aluwala, she's a very reputed Indian archaeologist. She said that now it's proven that India, like from Punjab till Tamil Nadu, was not invaded by the Aryans. It, this is archaeologically proven. So I think when you're talking about Aryans, you're talking about another kind of story. I'm just saying that for the audience here. Yeah. You're talking much more about Zoroastrianism and uh, the region near Iran. There was some element of a group of people called the Aryans there. Maybe the British actually used that theory and pasted this Aryan invasion theory upon the Indus Valley civilization. I don't know. That's my conjecture, but I want to know more. Secondly, this 12,000 year uh, thing, uh, this has also been brought up on the show. Apparently, around 10,000 BC, which is about 12,000 years ago, there was a very big cosmic event, uh, almost apocalyptic. It's called the Younger Dryas Impact. Uh, and this has been brought up a lot on American podcasts. Again, a lot of international archaeologists are not completely convinced about it. I totally am convinced. I believe that the Younger Dryas impact happened and it destroyed human civilization as we know it and we had to rebuild from there. Now I'll let you continue. So I'm sorry, it's very important for me as a podcaster to give this context to the listeners. Yeah. Now go on. A very true. See, as an academician, I know one thing. That two theories can coexist. And I am not of the opinion that if my theory is there, the other cannot coexist. So I am very uh, open to it, and I know that this second school of thought is there. But there are so much. There is so much evidence about the first school of thought also. And the moment you said that there are similarities between the Zoroastrians and the Hindus, one of the main reason people believe that it is because Zoroastrians came to India from Iran. That is why the similarities are there. Mm. And I say no, sir. That's not true because. Zoroastrianism, what we call today Zoroastrians and what we today call the Hindus, they have been together since 12,000 and more than 12,000 years. They have never been separated in a way if you go to see. Yeah. I saw a, a, a Netflix documentary about this, uh, what you just mentioned, about this apocalyptic event. And I just want to draw your attention to the fact that in that uh, documentary, even the Avastan concept is mentioned the person who was present from a Zoroastrian viewpoint, from an Avastan viewpoint. What is Avastan? Okay. So, Avasta is the language in which all the text of the Zoroastrians are written. So, Avasta goes back before Zoroastrian religion even started. It was the language, as you rightly pointed out, the sister language to Sanskrit. Okay. So, the name of that language is Avasta. 
what's the script like the script is totally different you may not have seen it anywhere because for thousands of years this language did not have a script the script developed only about 1500 years back uh, and of course one similarity to persian etc is that it is written from right to left mm. but apart from that it is quite different because there are 50 letters in the alphabet and each letter is written separately it's not conjoined as in arabic and persian or even pahlavi pahlavi is another iranian language mm. so that's why we call sanskrit and avastha sister languages now i'll let you carry on to the story sir uh, where do zoroastrians believe that zoroastrianism began like uh, do you want to start at the deluge like that's that's one thing you mentioned do you want to start at that 12000 year mark or do you want to go further back it's up further back okay let's do it yeah but i'll i'll want to hear about the deluge as well yeah so our ancient iranian history you know i have always uh, maintained that to understand religion you have to know the history hmm. because ancient history and ancient religion are always conjoined so you have to go uh, together so our ancient iranian history is for uh, convenience sake has been divided into five groups or five dynasties what we call and we are going to the first dynasty which is called peshdad now the very word peshdad means the first law givers pesh means first and dad means law here we are starting with the beginning of civilization when there was nothing agriculture was not there how to wear clothes was not there skills and trades were not there we are going right from at the beginning when people were in a nomadic stage hunting hunters gatherers mm. so at that time we are told in our uh, in our epic uh, um, i'll let me tell you about this we zoroastrians have our own epic like the ramayana and mahabharata we have it we call it the shahname and the shahname is a complete um, history and um, some part of religion also in it so the shahname has preserved this um, we use, some people call it mythology i call it ancient history which is unrecorded yeah until now <laughs> <laughs> go on so the very first of king in you can say the whole world was a person called gayomard gayomard means mortal man you know, every word has beautiful meanings gayomard means a mortal man and so he told the people you settle down there's no need to be nomadic you settle down and start agriculture and farming and that gave them time to sit and think what we call reflect up till now there was a survival instinct was uh, supreme but later uh as things progressed and as they got a chance to settle down they started thinking and the one of the first thoughts that king gayomard had was we are told that he got a divine uh message from a divine being saying that tell your people that there is only one god in the world and the name of that god is mazda all others work under him the nature works under him other divine beings work under him there is just one god mazda and the meaning of mazda means all knowing omniscient so tell people to connect to him and then everything will follow so that is how before we are talking of thousands of years before zarathustra came along huh? we are yeah. still a lot behind so once again going back to that first king who was also regarded as the first sociant in zoroastrian religion a sociant is a mini prophet sort of a thing who is um, inspired by god and that god was mazda so from uh, gayomard started the belief of believing in one god but at that point of time there were people who did not follow him and they in our tradition have been called devyasnis perhaps because uh they worship several gods and the hindu part of the uh, aryan they call their gods dev so that's why we call them devyasnis so it was just the two belief systems existed in those times mm. mazdayasni and devyasni mm. what's i'll tell you man and i'm so sorry i'm interrupting you sir but i have to give context to a lot of the listeners who are listening for the first time this has come up a lot when we're talking about ancient hindu history where uh, zoroastrianism has come up a lot on the show it's come up that it's a sister religion and what's also come up is in hindu stories 
there is dev and asura and in parsi stories there's ahura and daiva it was possibly just two sister clans talking about each other and in both the stories i mean it's like if you are india you look at pakistan as the villain if you are pakistan you look at india as the villain but in truth human beings are grey there's good and bad on both sides uh so that's all i wanted to say here yeah we are not enemies yeah. i never consider them as enemies even two brothers have differences of yeah. opinion yeah so it is perfectly all right but this is what i call internal evidence to show that yes they were together and then they separated because of some schism which happened at some particular time when prophet zarathustra came about because that schism took part later on what do you mean by schism um a uh, sort of a rift okay okay a rift between the two groups mm. so the first group which we today call europeans they separated first while uh, the southward migrations were taking place now how do we know that they were together by their languages so several european languages ancient european languages like germanic uh, saxonic etc and sanskrit and avastha have similar roots so that was why uh, these languages were studied and taught in europe because even latin because they were they have so common uh, uh, roots and bases and uh, etymology etc mm -hmm. so this uh, languages are one of the biggest proofs to show this theory that they were living together and they had one common language at that time which uh, philologists call the mother language mother to avastha sanskrit and european languages ancient european languages which unfortunately no longer exist but because of the similarity of these three languages they say that it did exist otherwise how come these three languages of now people who are so scattered are same hmm. yeah go on with the story so uh, then there were several other kings i'm not going into their uh, this thing details oh. but the fourth king after that was a king who brought in a golden era in uh, ancient iran and he was king jamshed who is known as imak shaita in the avasta and he was the person who in whose reign the great deluge happened so it's extensively mentioned in our avastan text so now we are talking about that king called imak shaita or jamshed and we are once again told that a divine being brought a message to him there a great deluge uh or you can say it may be even a rain uh, resulting in a deluge or a snow whatever which would result in a deluge would happen and he was told to save the his people the, uh, and take them to a safe place it's like very much like the story of noah or manu or gilgamesh mm. in uh, other civilizations so uh he built special enclosures which are also described in the our text avastan text apocalyptic, circular apocalyptic bunkers yes apocalyptic bunkers exactly circular and such have been found recently like um, in turkey etc places and um, when i had gone to russia there is a place called arkaim which also has some set, similar settlements and you know, the archaeologist why did they name the place arkaim because they connected with him, this place with this ima ima is king jamshed mm. so arka means settlement mm. and im means so even today if you google arkaim you will be taken back to this place um in russia um, this ark uh, this arkaim or what is called in avastha the vara of ima was constructed which gave refuge to people during the uh this uh, great flood because it was constructed at a higher altitude and in such a way that natural sunlight and natural air would be able to get into the houses go on sir. so king jamshed then um once again became the king after the deluge was settled like people hailed him as the savior and um the festival that we today celebrate on 21st of march and not only zoroastrians but many other uh, central asian countries also do celebrate this festival of uh, spring and we call it jamshedi navroz that festival is celebrated because king jamshed saved the world from the great deluge and started a new life a new settlement a new world sort of you know 
and even today people um celebrate it as the onset of spring when the when aries when the sun enters uh, aries uh, um the sun enters the constellation of aries we are told on 21st of march uh now i want to actually go back to that period post the deluge and post king jamshed so what happened after that so southward migration started happening but the original group of zoroastrians was still in russia no they everyone migrated everyone out. migrated because of gradually because of the co- increasing cold okay. and because of the uh, more expanses that they were able to get as they uh, managed to come down okay so they migrated towards like uzbekistan that area yes exactly okay uh, what was happening in mesopotamia at that time like when we talk about this whole mesopotamian civilization was it actually zoroastrianism or was it a whole separate cultural thought we are told just once in the passing that uh, after jamshid the king that came came from a place called bavra in avastha that name is bavra and scholars identify it as babylon mm. so perhaps uh, this foreign king um attacked iran and uh, one of the kings of this dynasty is a foreigner called zahak who is considered uh, of course because zoroastrian see him as evil only because he has usurped the kingdom so the uh, so this zahak was from bavra and scholars um identify this word bavra as babylon so perhaps they were when they south uh, initially they did not have to contend with other people i think we'll have to give some context on what and where babylon is it's yeah. po- the capital of mesopotamia yeah okay supposed to be one of the biggest ancient cities, cities. of the world which eventually got destroyed in i think when the whole old testament phase was going on yes yes around 2000 uh 500 or 3000 bc era okay that's when uh, it got not bc sorry years back it got destroyed at yeah. that point but before that it was kind of a stronghold of the ancient world uh so then the babylonian king attacks uh the zoroastrian capital yes uh, which is um at that time it was uh, regarded as uh, bactria which is modern day iraq yeah yeah afghanistan mm, Af- afghanistan yeah okay okay so so rationalism had come down till afghanistan at that point yes All so right. that was the expanse of ancient iran second period first as i told you was very much north then second uzbekistan turkis uh, turkmenistan uh, parts of russia and even now parts of iran uh, pakistan what we call afghanistan pakistan north india and we have references historical references telling us that uh, later dynasties did reach out to hindustan also in fact you'll be surprised to know that in the vedic avastan uh, books this place was called sindhu but it's in the avastan text it is mentioned as hindu mm. because if you uh, as i told you the two languages are very pe- uh, parallel so wherever there is uh, her in avasta the parallel word in sanskrit starts with sa mm. So if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this it's the artist clips